been like about a month and a half my boat was out of commission I had uh, the lower both lower units all the paint was peeling off of these the mercury 300s I had the exhaust actual actuator so it switches between the sport mode and the active was screwed up so it was not opening and then as one of the actuators went bad the bearings that are on the transom mounts that hold the engine uh to the transom and and rotate those bearings went bad and so did the the bushings on it so it was making this loud squeaking noise it was like a disaster of a million different things but i am back um back uh it is winter now i think the last video i shot was like back in freaking october so super excited to get back on the water it is an amazing day it's saturday uh, about 7 20 i got a little bit later than i wanted to but um we are gonna head out uh, see if I can find the bait on the way if not we're gonna stop I'm gonna grab some ballyhoos I may do a little bit of drifting depending on the current may anchor um, we will just see but brought some chum with me and brought all the rods we're throwing the kitchen sink at everything today baby let's get out there let's catch some fish and uh, see what we can get into so let's do it it <laughs> I forgot to say one thing it's freezing right now it's like 50 something degrees I just sat up top to try to look for and see if I saw any bait holy crap Woo! <laughs> it's in South Florida in January, so. So we're just tied up to the buoy. If you guys see, I like to put a, um, I don't use this rope. I always grab my own tie down because you don't want to mess this one up. This one's, you know, if not, you screw it up for everybody else. So we're gonna throw a bag of chum in here, um, try to get some ballyhoo, and then we're headed straight off to the reef. Um, you know, and see if we can drift a little bit, maybe get a nice mutton, a ki uh, like some kingfish. Um, you know, we can see what we can get into, but let's throw the chum bag in, um, see how quick the ballyhoo can show up here. I'm in 17 feet of water, right, right off the coast of Miami, see how close we are. So um, let's throw this chum bag in. I don't know if you guys can see the ballyhoo are already starting to show up behind the boat. So we got a pretty decent current right now. Uh, I may try to use the ballyhoo. If not, I'm gonna throw down in the net. I like to use the ballyhoo if I can because it'll keep the baits a lot longer. Once you throw that cast net on the fish, the ballyhoo die really, really fast. So let's let this sit for a little bit more. I'm not spending any time here. I'm not even fishing. Um, we're just here to catch bait and then we're out with sinks. See these tiny like triggers eating. I had a bunch of frozen. <laughs> fish but see them all ballyhoos are back there they're starting to show up here i don't know what these are these are like they're not blue runners they're like really tiny ass fish but i don't know so we're gonna just throw it on this cast net they're all right here the ballyhoop is just the current's not that strong so they're just sitting behind it waiting for the chum so i'm just gonna throw the net on them so let's let's get it This is a 3 8 net. It's a little bit dry right now. Key to throwing the cast net is making sure that the cast net is not tangled. If it's tangled at all, it's not going to open. So let's throw down. Thank you. 
We got, I don't know, probably like two or three dozen ballyhoo. I have a bunch of frozen ballyhoo still. I mean, we're leaving them, there's a ton, but let's get fishing, let's go. current it's 0.4 uh, miles per hour so if I drift we're probably just literally just gonna sit here the baits aren't gonna go anywhere so uh, change of plans a little bit I'm gonna throw a couple flat lines behind the boat uh, and then we're gonna bump troll so what that is is we're gonna put it in and out of gear um, until you know we find the fish so we're kind of zigzag 230s all the way back in to 100 feet we're gonna go back and forth um, but I'm gonna throw these things out uh, I'm gonna put a ballyhoo flat line probably about a hundred feet or so behind the boat. And then another one maybe a little bit shorter. One's gonna have wire on it, one's not gonna have wire on it. Let's see what we can get into. So I'm bump trolling a little bit. I got both lines behind the boat there. Um, and then all I'm doing is putting this boat into gear like that. And then we're gonna bump it right up back out of gear, keeping it between a mile to two miles an hour. Um, just move around, because when there's no current, it's so hard. The baits don't drift, they kind of get all caught up. Um, you know, so we're gonna do this for a little bit, see how it goes, and then, uh, you know, make a game time decision. All right, so I, all right, so I said I was gonna throw the kitchen sink at everything today, so we're on the deep drop. It has been super, super slow. So we're gonna drop that down, see what we can get. All right, so for the rig, I have lights uh, hooked up to a chicken rig. I have squid on the chicken rig. And then right now, cause we got about a knot and a half of current, mile and a half of current. It's a five, he's at a five pound thick lead. Let's throw that thing in there. And then I got my Banex 1000. I'm just gonna drop that bitch to the bottom. This thing has a self assist too, so it'll go down by itself. You don't have to let it go. And I also threw out a flat line here just in case, who knows, maybe a dolphin rolls through um, and picks this thing off, but it's out there floating, see if we can grab something. But it's a beautiful day out here today. So sometimes it's like, come out and try everything, you get bait and all that kind of stuff and you can't catch fish, but I always know if you go about to 800 feet off of Miami, throw a chicken rig down, you're gonna get some, uh, some rosies and they taste good, so. If it's to prevent a skunk, that's what we're gonna do. So we're probably gonna do this. I'll head back in, um, you know, after I get a handful of rosies, and then maybe grab, maybe try to bottom fish a little bit. I don't know. Depends on how I'm feeling. So. Pulling. All right. What do you got on there? What's on there? You guys are not happy. Come on, come on. Come on, baby. Whoa, what do we got? All right, pull a little bit. Keep pulling. All right. Look, 26 meters, 23, 20, 15. Rosies. Rosies. All right, there's some good size ones in there. Woo! All right, I'll take them. All right. Got some rosies here. Woo, got the squid. This is a little small guy, but so use them out much. <sighs> things are sharp, man. These things are called black belly rosies. They have this black stomach on them. But besides that eye on that thing, huh? But the white, this meat, 
The meat on these things is super, super white. Oh man, they taste so good. So I'm gonna try to get a get a bunch of these so we can make a nice dish tonight. Um, do a little do a little catch and cook. Let's see if we got them all. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Okay, looks like a stringer full of them. Stringer full of rosies. Ugh. All right. Holy goodness gracious. We got a stringer full. Ah. Ah. Okay. Whew. All right. Ah, okay. All right, guys. So. All right, so I stopped them about in 70 feet of water. There's some rocks right here, so I threw the anchor up. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw out a butterfly ballyhoo um, and try to get a mutton snapper. So all I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna cut off the tail and then I'm gonna flay out the middle, break off the beak for this ballyhoo and then remove the spine in here so that this thing moves really, really well. So if you guys watch, all I'm gonna do is I'm chopping off the tail here, and then I'm gonna fillet on each side of the spine. So it's one side, two sides. You can run it right up the spine. And then you're gonna feel that, see that spine right in the middle of the boat, and just pull it and break it off. And then as you can see, that thing floats pretty well so then all I'm gonna do I'm gonna just hook in this thing right through the nose here right right through the nose toss that baby out all right and then what I got I drift with this setup too this is my Favorite setup for mutton. But so all I got here is that main leader. I put a loop knot into the leader, and then all I do is hook this weight setup and then drop this thing to the bottom. Wait for it to I'm gonna slow it down. Then once it hits the bottom, put it in the rod holder and wait for that baby to bend over. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Nice and slow. Could be a mutton here. Could be a mutton. Wait off. Oh, it's a mutton. Oh, it's a mutton, baby. Woo-hoo-hoo. Mutton. Ah. Woo-hoo. Swallowed that baby whole. Little mutton snapper. Nineteen. Oh, he's nineteen. He's he is exactly 
legal. I love mutton snapper, so we are gonna be taking the big guy home. Let's get this baby in the box. Whew. Whew. All right, mutton in the box. Oh yeah, it's definitely another mutton. Woo Not another mutton. Yeah! Okay. Holy shit. Takes a lot for that fucking boat. Yeah. Whoa! Get my mutton snapper. Oh yeah, it's another mutton. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, another mutton. He looks a little. This one's a little on the smaller end. This guy's on a little bit of the smaller end, so we're gonna. We're gonna throw them back. Knocking the cobwebs off today, baby. So I tried the drift. I got those, I got those uh, ballyhoos and really no luck today. It was super slow. The uh, the current was like non-existent, so it was making it tough. I tried the bump troll, not happening. So I ran out 800 feet, um, stocked up on some rosies, just had to get the W. And then I came back to one spot that I had uh, for muttons uh, and picked up that nice like 20 inch mutton. So. Pretty solid day, um, you know. Either way, it's, it's always a good day for uh, a January out in the water. It's pretty flat, so we get back, head on in through a hole over inlet, and then cook up some probably rosies. I don't know, maybe some mutton. We're gonna see. But uh, let's meet me back at the house. <laughs> Get the good stuff. It's white, but we're gonna clean up these fish. We got all of the rosies and the mutton in the box, so grab my knives, clean these things up, and then uh, still deciding how I'm gonna make them. Um, but may do a little fried, maybe a little parmesan. We're gonna see. So uh, let's clean these things up start with some of these rosies. These things have a super black stomach to them, but they taste phenomenal. I mean, you don't eat the stomach, but... show you guys in a second here. These things play pretty much like a snapper. Go right down the, the rib line. And then once you you can see this white meat. Side lining for the stomach because it's like black. Inside too. See all of his insides are like black. But the meat is super white. Amazing.
I wrapped the fish up yesterday uh, in a bunch of paper towels and put it in the refrigerator. Uh, I like to wipe, put it in paper towels instead of just putting it in the um, in the bag because it takes a lot of the moisture out. If not, the fish will get really, really like mushy. Um, so what we're gonna do today is we have our black belly rose fish. Um, I'm gonna do a Parmesan. Where's my butter at? Has some mayonnaise in it, some butter, black pepper, sea salt. And we're gonna throw it in this pan and then we're gonna load it into the broiler. So um, this is super good. Um, this is like a Parmesan crusted uh, black belly rose fish. So let's get started. Gonna grease the pan up. Just gonna lay these fillets in here. Like so. Salt, little pepper. We're gonna put this into here for six minutes. All right. Like I said, I don't waste any fish, so I'm gonna take this chunk of fish, and then you usually have some pets down here. We'll come back. It's funny, like when I was going out two to three times a week, there were bass everywhere under here. But as soon as I stopped, they uh, they stopped coming in. So we got a, we got a third of a cup of butter in the microwave. Put about a third of a cup of this Parmesan cheese. Or, oh shit! Do a little bit more than that. It's a big pan. There we go. We got our butter, a third, man, yeah, whatever, about a third of a cup of this, and then we're just gonna mash this all together here. Put a little bit more cheese in. I like the cheese it. Mm -hmm. So that fish has been cooking. All we're gonna do. Push this together a little bit here. We're gonna take our cheese mixture. We're gonna put that right on top. Put this baby back in the oven for a couple more minutes and we'll be good. It's been about five minutes. Ooh, baby. Ooh, look at that. The cheese just broils nice on top. And that butter and that mayonnaise. This you can do it, eat it on a little bit of bread. Today I'm just gonna put it on a plate and uh, try it just like that. It is hot, but you can already tell. It smells amazing. This is a super easy recipe. You can do it with like any sort of sort of white fish. You know, snapper is my favorite. Um, you know, this rose fish, but you can see how gooey it is and definitely buttery. Uh, a little scoop right there. You see that? Mm -mm -mm. All right, now we gotta give it a go. Rose has been running, not at COVID. All right. All right, it's extremely hot. Oh my God. This is one of my favorite ways to cook fish. It is not the healthiest, but oh my God, that tastes amazing. Especially when it's hot right out of the oven. My goodness. Yes. Mm. Awesome, amazing. Rosefish is super good too. Um, this is quick, this is easy, like five ingredients in this recipe, but one of my favorites and go-tos. But I'm gonna keep eating, but thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure to hit that like button, it really does help uh, grow on the channel. And don't forget, 
If you guys are not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. More fishing and boating videos on the way, especially since I got the conch back, baby. All right. It is poor, but.